You're listening to Brick by Brick, a podcast by the Brownstone Experience. I am Felicia, and I will be interviewing women of color entrepreneurs on the couch, where we will learn more about their products, services, and how we can support them. Enjoy. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to Brick by Brick, a podcast by the Brownstone Experience. Today, we have Jennifer James. Welcome, Jennifer. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks Um, for having me. Of course. Thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you for accepting the invitation to be our April cover star. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. So excited. So excited. <laughs> April focuses on wow. financial literacy. Yes. Um, and I'm so happy to have you to share um, with our audience who um, can learn a lot from you through your own personal journey, your own journey as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Um, and then your journey as what you do currently now in the venture capital space. Absolutely. Um, but on the couch, we're going to talk a little bit about who you are as a woman. Okay. So tell me a little bit about who you are, Jennifer. Oh, wow. That's such a broad question. question. Yes. Right? So all I the am, things. I am all the things. <laughs> I feel like I weigh f- wear 50 hats a day. Mm-hmm. So I am a um, child of God first. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I am a, a mentor. I'm a business partner. I'm a sister. I'm, a, I'm all the things, all right? Things. And I think all of these things shape who I am today and how I go about my day. Yes. Um, from day to day, so I love it. I love yes. it. Sage and I start our mornings off both of both of my girls, but uh-huh. Emery's normally out of the car by the time we say our affirmations. Oh, nice! And the first thing we say is, "I am a child of God." Mm. Yes, I love so that. that I love that. Yes. I love that. And let me say, I have three beautiful children. Yes, uh, my son Nathan's twelve. Um, Riley, my only girl's eight, and then I have my I call him my fireball, Aiden, who's three, who will be four, but. Um, as you say that, there's nothing like, you know, in the morning taking the kids to school, still having that normalcy, mm-hmm. right, um, before you go in to um, be the firefighter for the day. Yes, ma'am. Fires. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I was, we wake up with the firefighter head in the morning, but, oh, in the morning, it's a little bit more calm, huh? <laughs> Right, a little it's bit more the calm. Afternoon. Absolutely. It's the afternoon. Absolutely. Afternoon. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So currently you are, again, as I mentioned, in the venture capital space, but let's go back. Let's mm-hmm. go back to um, undergrad. Mm-hmm. Okay, undergrad. So what did you major in undergrad? Mm-hmm. Um, even though it may not be related. Right. So my <laughs> undergrad, I do not advise, but it's not related. But that I could also be a testimony to somebody. Um, health sciences. Um, just knew I was going to go into the pre-med space. Um, you know, once I took chemistry too, I knew it wasn't for me. And so I just really um, decided to really take a a bigger picture uh, or look at the picture of what I was really trying to do and um, quickly got into um, IT, Mm -hmm. um, information technology. Um, And from there, I've just really, you know, as a consultant, being able to move from just the day-to-day IT support to project management, Mm -hmm. um, that really led me into the entrepreneurship ultimately. Entrepreneurship. So... About how long did you were you in corporate America before you took that pivot? Right. So I was in corporate America, I would say about six years mm-hmm. before I took the pivot, and that's post college. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. not. That's a good season. Yeah. It's a good season. It's yeah. a really good season. Um, I was in it for about six years, and you know, as a consultant, because it's project to project based, mm-hmm. um, that gave me. Um, a lot of, um, I, w- I never really got too comfortable with projects. I knew after 18 months or 24 months, I was moving on to something different. Mm-hmm. But then it also um, came a time in my career um, in the trajectory where I was moving, where I was actually moving up fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I just got to the point where I had to decide, am I going to continue this technology route, which I love technology and mm-hmm. products, I do, or do I want to kind of step, step, take a step, a leap of faith and yeah. try something on my own for a little bit. And yeah. So after having, you know, my first child and pregnant with Riley, I knew it was time. Yeah, yeah. Having those babies, um, I've heard it uh, phrased before that we're sort of rebirth. Oh, yes. Every time we birth oh, a child. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because every time something, a transition happens, I'll call it, um, it births something new, like you're saying. You yeah. know, um, from, you know, getting married to buying a house to having the children. Um, it just, you know, it's always something... Um, 
bigger and better on the other side. And so um, those are typically the times I've decided to take the leap. Yes, yes. yes. Like uh, feeling the change. Coming. Absolutely. Um, so what are some what are some things you think that you learned in corporate that uh, helped you to make that transition initially? Absolutely. Um, well, because in corporate, um, IT worked a really closely with human resources. And there were, um, you know, times where I was doing some HR aspects in IT from a, a reporting analytical perspective. Um, you start to realize how all the departments really work together and come together to work because HR is the core. You know, yeah. human resources is the core. And you start to see how um, business is done from an executive perspective. Mm -hmm. You start to see um, how um, some of these seats at the table uh, really do matter when it comes to decision making and influence. Um, you also get to see how uh, work and decisions and just um, just the day-to-day -day trindles either down from top to down, and sometimes yeah. how the bottom can um, rise it to the top as well, right? So you start to see how business really truly works, the ups, the downs, um, financials, good years, bad years. Um, great years, of course, is when you're getting bonuses, yeah. right? <laughs> but the thing about corporate that always stood out to me um, and now that I'm in entrepreneurship, kind of realizes, you know, at the end of the year, when you think about workers, and there's there are people that work hard throughout the year, and when they come with that, you know, one to two percent bonus, I got one too many of those, mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. realize, oh hey, I help manage or bring in a million dollars or two yeah. million dollars, and I'm getting five hundred dollar bonus. <laughs> For the entire year, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stretched over 12 months at that. <laughs> you know, it just mm -hmm. became, to me, I knew my value and my worth was way more than what was being um, portrayed at the time. And so I just I just knew it was time for me to, I didn't think I could lose anything at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, one thing that I hear when I hear you explain, you know, what you were seeing or feeling during the time when you started to get the itch to move out of corporate. Mm -hmm. um, but while you were still there is uh, the ability to look at other departments and how they all work together. Mm -hmm. So for our sisters mm -hmm. who are still in corporate and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of time, I know a lot of women feel like their magic is sort of being subdued or mm -hmm. dimmed in corporate. Yeah. Um, if you're looking to move up, across, or move out of your department, um, I would say that it's important to take on those projects, take roles in those um, large projects where you can see how the company operates cross-functionally, sure. um, and then perhaps you will see a different path for yourself in corporate. Would you agree? Absolutely, and I think it's good to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's why succession planning is so important in the corporate world for that reason. Um, what is succession planning for the person who absolutely. doesn't know? So succession planning is when really um, leaders, executives of an um, of your company are planning ahead. A lot of times it's two to three to four years ahead on who's going to take what position at the time, mm -hmm. what they're priming you for, mm -hmm. basically. And they know who they want to move up in the managerial, um, you know, executive level um, after time. And so I would say if you are that person that is looking to move up, um, within your department or um, within your organization, it's having those conversations and understanding um, how things are really working, how are they really generating revenue. Each business unit generates their own revenue. Yeah. How are they doing that? What are the impacts? How do you read reports that really tell you uh, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, really getting into the weeds and not so much the surface of the day-to-day -day work, mm -hmm. but really problem solving. Yeah. You know, because uh, that's really all businesses do really is problem solve. Leaders problem solve. You get paid to solve problems, to put out fires every yes. single day. Yes. You know, and being able to master that will get you um, really far, along with having good emotional IQ. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Um, being I able literally to just read. had this conversation this yes, morning. Absolutely. Emotional intelligence. Yeah, emotional yes. intelligence. Being able to read people, read mm -hmm. body languages when you're in the room. Who's talking? Who's not talking? Um you know, just all of the things, right? Mm -hmm. When someone may like something, may not like something. Um, all of that is just, it's really an emotional problem-solving, decision-making mm -hmm. type of journey, mm -hmm. right? But it's, um, it's great. I think the corporate world is great, um, and I think it's a great start um, for anyone that's looking to leap out or to grow within yeah. an organization. Absolutely, absolutely. Had you always had the, the urge or the desire to build your own? Oh, absolutely. I was, I think I've told this story um, recently. I was 10 selling keychains in my <laughs> grandma's neighborhood yeah. in the summertime, riding my bike. 
I went to MJ Designs, got the little keychain, whatever it's called, and I was making small, medium, larges, 50 cents, 75 a dollar, and I would literally go door to door yeah. selling keychains that yeah. I've made. So I always knew that I wanted to have my own business. I just didn't know what that looked like, mm-hmm. you know, for a long time. I've had, I've probably started about 50. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. It's in you. <laughs> not wasn't all successful, you. but yeah, it's, yes. great. it's been great. That's good. That's yeah. good. Okay. So you, so your first venture, mm-hmm. what was your first venture? Um, my first business venture, right? Out and after corporate. Oh, after, after corporate. corporate. Yes. Corporate. Yeah. So yeah. after corporate. Yeah, because um, you said 50, so I had yeah. to make sure we know the keychains. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my first one was Active Ego. Okay. Um, Active Ego was a plus size athleisure brand. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was, um, in between pregnancies in pregnant, I had a hard time finding athletic apparel because I was plus size. Mm-hmm. Um, and the ones that I were, I found, they were just dull, no personality, navy black, you know, just, mm-hmm. just something I didn't want to, um, be caught dead in half the time or I had to go to, um, no offense, but you know, just some of the stores, using it, mind you, I'm in my twenties. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to some of the stores that my mom was going to at the time in order to get that. And I'm just like, this is just not going to work. So just as a hobby at the time, I was just kind of um, fabric sourcing and decided, oh, I'm going to make my own pants. I'm going to make my own shirt. And so really just got into fabric sourcing and then found a sewer and then started doing, you know, learned about patterns and found a pattern maker. It was all these things I was putting together, killing time at the same time, but not really realizing what I was doing. And I'll never forget, I was at Oddfellows um, in Dallas, and I was um, working, and I had made a poncho and some leggings that match. And I had someone come to the table, I was like, man, where'd you get that? And I had to do a double check, and I'm like, oh, I I actually did this myself. And she was like, oh, that looks really good. I was like, yeah, it was just kind of like a one-off, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as she left the table, I was like, that was my focus group. I'm about to start a business. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I That's needed. It. Let's go. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So Active Ego was great. Um, had the chance to participate in Fashion Week. Mm-hmm. Uh, within a year of that, got um, within 18 months of me making that decision, I was in Neiman Marcus mm-hmm. um, working with different stores like Walmart. And um, I've also had a chance, not with Active Ego, but with the designs in general, do a lot with the NBA and WNBA. Mm-hmm. with manufacturing and that's when I really kind of got into the white labeling space and it's just really been um, a blessing yeah. um, there's there's thing about there's something about products that people are going to buy no matter if we're in COVID or not or that's whether right. you know things are going great or not you know products is just something um, that just sells and I'm just so blessed to have found that niche yeah, um, yeah. within business yes yeah so um, what year was this that you launched Active Eco? Oh, my goodness. So I launched Active Ego in 20, 2014. 2014. I'm sure you realize this now, but the, you were ahead of your time, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because we look around now and you have your Savage Fenties or your mm-hmm. larger companies that are producing through 3X. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But at the time, that wasn't the case. At the time, it wasn't the case. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. And... Um, you know, I, I, you're right. I was, I was definitely before time um, and saw that. Mm-hmm. I just didn't understand the business yes. at the time. I was still a novice in a lot yes. of ways. I was still passionate mm-hmm. about what I was doing. And there's nothing wrong with having passion, mm-hmm. right? You just look at things different, though, mm-hmm. when you're passionate, you know. And so um, through maturing with the business and just um, taking a seat back from being the brand to helping um, prominent individuals bring out their brands and launch brands. Um, I'm, I'm definitely seeing where my gaps were, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I, but I also did very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was, you know, the first step was just stepping out there on faith and doing it mm-hmm. right. Um, and not really having all of the right puzzle pieces to put it together. Yes. Right. Yes. But just really establishing my blueprint, um, to be able to later go and perfect and be able to help, um, others make impactful, uh, products nationwide. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think a gym that I hear there is um, there. You don't have you don't have any regrets no. about stepping out, right? Not knowing it all, not knowing it all. I've so often heard um, of women who have a desire to do things in the entrepreneur space, or I'm going to say anything, right? Because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily have to be entrepreneur. Because if you're going to be led by fear, this could bleed over into other areas of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but stepping out with no regret and understanding that you're just going to have to learn as you go. 
You're going to have to learn as you go. You know, one of the things, um, I'm a Kobe Bryant fan. Mm. Um, and mama one mentality. of the things, I, yeah, the mama mentality. But one of the things that he, I remember him saying that I thought was so important is it's just such a waste of time to have doubt, right? Because if you do something and are successful at it, guess what? You're going to have to go to sleep and wake up and do it again the next day. Mm. Okay? If you fail... <laughs> guess what you're still gonna have to get up the next day and do it again right or try again right so really having doubt and just fear um I had to learn to overcome that in a lot of ways and I do that through affirmations myself mm -hmm. I have to affirm myself it is not easy yes, um it is not easy for um just minority women black women to step out there running businesses in general especially mm -hmm. if, if you need capital right mm -hmm. so there's a lot of um, uh, especially in my space, um, having to overcome the age and the, and the race and all of these things um, that I come to the table with has always been um, something I had to affirm myself in doing mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's a natural thing, but it's also one of those things where, you know, I would feel much worse if I didn't try. Yeah, yeah. When you said uh, that you come to the table with, it reminds me of one of my favorites, Malik. She always says, I belong everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's an affirmation on its own, right? When you walk into rooms, I belong everywhere. Yeah, um, I, love it's, that. I love the Kobe Bryant yeah. um, quote. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, so, so active ego. Mm -hmm. So, let's. Um, how did active ego sort of phase out its, its own brand? Yeah. So, what I decided with active ego is that I was going to turn that into a, like a white labeling company, mm -hmm. right? I no longer wanted to be the face. I no longer wanted to. What does white label mean? For okay. the person who doesn't yes. know. So, <laughs> I, I wanted to focus on the product design and management, not necessarily um, necessarily being the face or marketing and promoting it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to license my product to someone that wanted to push it mm -hmm. to market and have it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and white labeling is very common, by the way. Um, so I started working um, with, um, you know, individuals that were looking to have, um, you know, dominate in the digital space, mm -hmm. e-commerce-wise, mm -hmm. from an apparel perspective. And then that really just kind of led me to really helping them with their brand, but being able to still use my styles to do it, right? Absolutely. So because they didn't have, and, when, and I say people because it's prominent individuals that really don't like entertainers, athletes, mm -hmm. you know, people that really don't have time to run the business, but that want a space yeah. um, in, this, in this lane. So it's really just managing um, the product on their behalf. And because it's apparel and something that I'm used to doing, it's something that they um, like, I have the responsibility of making sure that they are generating sales from, from the apparel itself. Yes, yes. And it's not just apparel that I do, but that has been my mark, right? Yeah. My niche is being able, because that's where I started. That's where you started. In the apparel space, I was absolutely. Thinking. Yes, yes, yes. And it seems like in that, in that experience mm -hmm. through Active Ego, you really uh, learned of your strengths being behind the scenes Absolutely. and the, and the business, mm -hmm. uh, of the business side of entrepreneurship. Absolutely. You say? Absolutely. Like, oh, this is the part I like. This right? is the part I, I like being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the part I love. Yeah. And, and I th because I think a lot of us underestimate what it's like to be in front of the camera, Absolutely. um, in charge of the marketing and being the face of it. Um, mm -hmm. and that's why these huge conglomerates, you know, they pay, the celebrities and the entertainers, um, and then they may have the capital but to put behind it to Absolutely. make it one big success. Absolutely. Yes. You have to have capital, definitely, to <laughs> run a business. Because when you think about marketing, ad spend, I mean, if you think about all of the components that it takes to run a business and then overseeing staff, it's a, it's a huge responsibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, after act, Active Ego, we uh, merged into Strategy House. Yep. Strategy House is where I focus on product growth and um, development. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where um, I decided after a couple years um, to kind of take a pivot. That's where I start finding gaps on what I could have done differently. And it's really me f um, having the insight on products and where they're going and finding the right face for my products, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, it's, and I give you, I give everyone this simple example. Uh, Kylie Jenner did not develop her makeup. No. What she did was shopped around makeup houses and she tested them, something that was already established and done. And the one she liked the best, she put her name and logo on it and she ran with it. Yes, ma'am. So I think of me as that product development, product management person. I have things on the shelf. 
Mm -hmm. I'm either working with manufacturing houses or individuals that have um, products that are already established. Mm -hmm. And what me and my team do is we go look for the right face to represent the product in order to launch. Mm, I love it. I love it. So <laughs> what I hear, Jennifer, as a woman um, and as a mom, Right. Because we have to sort of build our lives around our careers and how they work for our families. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also it's nuance. Right. So we go from being less accessible because we have young babies and then we go to seasons and chapters. Right. right? right. Um, and so you've made those pivots um, throughout your career mm -hmm. to align with your family. Mm -hmm. What would you say you has been? What have you learned thus far? Because we're still learning mm -hmm. every day. Still learn. evolving. <laughs> every day. Every still day. Evolving. What would you say um, you learned? Because you said you started in your 20s, right? You know, I am okay with failing, right? Some people are like, there is no balance. There's no th such thing. You have to be okay with failing, but I try not to fail in the same area every week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm missing practices. I'm missing games. I'm missing family time. I'm missing a lot um, sometimes, and sometimes I'm missing a lot work-wise. It just, mm -hmm. you know, you just you try to be as flexible as you can, right? And then I have moments um, where I just, you know, I need a month to shut down. Yeah. Come on, mom, to shut down. Month yes, Lord. Shut. Thank you, Lord, I need a for month the month. To shut down. Or, <laughs> Not a week. you know, a you know, month. this week is limited. It's just Monday through Wednesday this week. I yes. just... Don't, you know, so I just and that now that fle that flexibility I love, mm -hmm. right? But I don't have it down pat. Yeah. I just I have three kids that are all active, um, two of them in yes, competitive sports, and yes. they travel, uh, which means I have to travel. Um, I sacrifice sleep mm -hmm. a lot um, and just personal time, you know. So it's it's um, and I even homeschooled at one point, mm -hmm. you know, in the midst of it, you know, yeah. especially during COVID. So. You know, to me, I'm still evolving myself, yeah. you know. Um, it's just one foot at a time, yeah. you know, and I think every season looks different for everyone. Yes. But I will say it's important, what I've learned the last couple seasons is the importance of making sure that I am okay with self Yes, as well. Checking in. Absolutely, yeah. checking in. And a lot of that, um, like I say, taking off or... You know, today it's just going to be a half a day today, you know, yeah. and it's a, it's a Monday. I know, but you just had the weekend. I know, but I'm so tired. You yeah. know, I'm so tired, yeah. you know, just being okay with that. Yeah, being okay uh, with that. And letting that be enough validation. I love the, um, you know, I, I'm okay with failing. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, it, it, you know, people say, you know, failure is a part of success, but I want to keep repeating that until – it resonates with um, the right person, the right woman, you know, one at a time, mm. um, because you, you just can't be um, rooted in fear and you can't allow it to move you if you want to see success. Because I talk to so many young women, um, or, they, you know, they could be our age and they are wanting to do things, but they won't step out for one reason or, a, or another. Um, and so what we've talked about here today is basically getting over the fear of failure. Yeah. Fear, failure, and people like stability, which mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah, absolutely. I get that. People like um, consistency, mm -hmm. and um, I get that too. And um, it's just one of those things where, you know, you know, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a cautious risk taker, but I'm still a risk taker, yeah. right? Because I think that um, what I know is that when God puts visions in me, of whatever, you know, if I can mm -hmm. see where I'm going, mm -hmm. I just have to move to get there, mm -hmm. right? And if I can, and it's hard. You want to be a control freak and control. I'm a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay on this job, but I'm gonna also do this and that. And mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. absolutely. People do it all the time, and I do, you know, advise it if that's for you. But I also feel like, you know, we're all on a time, yeah. much, right? And I just always, you know, my biggest fear is leaving this earth and not leaving a legacy of any sort. Mm -hmm. You know, especially for my children and my family. And so I try to keep that in the forefront. And make the decisions accordingly. Yes, yes. So what would you say you found that you are most passionate about in your career? I am passionate about... You got me feeling bad about using the word passionate. In Why? Early no, you passion is good. <laughs> you like... Uh, well, no, you know passion you is good. In passion. <laughs> okay, passion my bad. is good. No, no, no. Passion is good. Um, I am just passionate about making an impact. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, I want to make a footprint. I want to leave a mark. Mm -hmm. 
That's my thing. And that mark is going to be different sizes depending on where it is. But I just want to contribute. Yeah. I've always, I'm a contributor. Yes. I love to contribute. I love to feel um, like I've done a contribution for the day. Yes. Right? Whether it's words, whether it's um, capital, whether it's helping give advice. I mean, whatever. Mm -hmm. I just want to feel like I'm helping something grow. Yes. I have a passion helping, seeing things from nothing and then... Yes. Something. And that, because really that's what I was, to be honest, mm -hmm. right? I have a passion for helping people stand out. Um, I always say helping products stand out on the shelves, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, I have a passion for that, mm -hmm. you know, helping people feel mm -hmm. and, and educating them and, and helping them grow businesses the way it should be so that yes. they can make a bigger impact long term. Yes. What would you say as a black woman, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, um, and professional, uh, you have learned that you can contribute most to other black women, entrepreneurs, and professionals. Hmm. What could you share with them from the tables that you sit at when you may be the, the only one there, right? Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, the advice I would give is to, to be really, just to really steadfast, to be honest. Stick to your guns. I feel like there's a lot of power in what we bring as black women, mm -hmm. um, from intelligence to looks to just problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is just um, you know, genetic or just there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and to understand that we are just as smart as the people at the table. Yes, Lord. You know, one of my superpowers, I would say, and I see a lot of women, um, oh, that's black a good women one. bring. What is your superpower? Is, I love it. Yeah, is <laughs> being able to um, create opportunities that people can't see. Yes, ma'am. That's right. a part of that magic, right? It's part of the magic. What about this? Yeah, what yeah. about this? There's a lot of times I'm pitching things. Oh, have you considered? Yeah. Did you think about? Have you tried aligning X, Y, and Z? You know, things that, angles that they hadn't even, they can't even challenge you on because they haven't done enough um, research in that space, right? And so just figuring out what your superpower is and staying steadfast in that. You know, you don't have to be any more than what you're, you, you are enough. Yes. You're enough validation. So what you're bringing is enough. And the people around the table, either they're going to recognize it or they're not. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, then you know you're not at the right table. You're not at the right That's table. Right. So finding your superpower. Absolutely. Yes, finding your superpower and being steadfast in that, yeah. confident in that. Oh, absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. All right, Jen. So, yes, it has been a pleasure having you on the couch. Um, I'm so excited for so many women to see you, right, because I think you're an example of um, when we see each other, we know that we can be. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're interested in more about what Jennifer does from day to day in helping businesses to get capital, um, you definitely want to listen to the next episode at the table um, and just take away the gems from this episode of finding your superpower. I would definitely say don't be scared to fail right. um, at all and to just move and shake with the seasons of life. Absolutely. That's what I took away. I love what about that. you? No, that's perfect. You okay. summed it up great. That's All perfect. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for having All me. All right. See you later. Bye. Thanks for joining. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, like, and share so that others will learn about Brick by Brick by the Brownstone Experience. You can also learn more about our guests by going to our website, The Brownstone Experience.